Uh, thank you for joining uh, our session. Uh, this is uh, uh, unblocking the power of, t of telemetry. And uh, we, uh, sorry. <laughs> uh, we are uh, Ide and Nakashima from Hitachi Service Computing Department Unit. So we, we believe op open telemetry can be uh, effective support the de design and development. And we have been exploring way to achieve this. So today we would like to share our experiments with you. Okay, so today we work in a world of complex distributed systems. 74% of organizations use microservice architecture and 42% of organizations use hybrid cloud. This, this brings uh, great flexibility and scalability, but uh, also adds a lot of complexity. So recent reports show the uh, 75 of city CIO says it is could become impossible to manage digital performance. And uh, also uh, around half of big project missed the uh, deadline and uh, also exceeded the budget. So many developers spend a large part of uh, their time for finding and fixing issues. So sometimes designers and developers face challenges. What value will be uh, implementing a cache server bring? Or it, will it just add a uh, burden in term of operation cost, operation and cost? And so another say, uh, when a DB failure occurs, how will the effort of spread, what is a, a risk of cascade failure? What is the impact of latency? So how should we ad address such issues? We need to that, uh, provide an ac accurate data-driven understanding of system behavior, even during the development phase. So we believe that is an open territory might be uh, suitable for this issue. So open territory, uh, also known as OTER, is an open source observability framework and, and uh, specification. The OTER framework provides two primary components. One is the uh, measurement library, and the second one is the OTER collector. So, uh, the measurement library can be integrated in application by uh, an SDK or attached to an auto instrumentation agent. The telemetry data collected by the, this library is uh, then sent to the hotel collector. The hotel collector gathers it and process this telemetry data and favor forward to monitoring service, such as those of on the cloud. Notary uh, hotel itself does not handle the storage or visualization of telemetry data. These functions are managed by external tools and service. So uh, hotel is uh, cons considered an, as an operational tool, but uh, it should be also variable for design and development. It enables data-driven decision-making, and it cor correlates telemetry signal across application. However, uh, it's true that open telemetry is a complex tool with a sufficient impact on production. So some might think it's too much to use just for development. So, but uh, there are also favorite, fa favorable trends. Auto generate, auto, auto instrumentation allows fast attach, detach, mining, uh, minimizing setup cost. 
also a uh, growing support from open source and uh, could cloud service for analyzing of hotel signals. So therefore, uh, we are exploring way to maximize hotel value in design and development by attaching only when we need it and detaching when we it's no longer necessary. So to achieve this approach, there are two key op hotel features. First is a auto instrumentation, and the second is a signals. So let's examine each in detail. So auto instrumentation at uh, instrumentation without modifying program code using a uh, technique called monkey patting. When we auto, uh, when the auto instrumentation tool, open telemetry agent is attached and it analyzes uh, intermediate code and detect framework like Spring Food, uh, Spring Boot, and uh, modify modify data handling process dynamically. So uh, hearing this, probably you think uh, language that compiled to binaries like GoLang or C language can be used this, uh, can, can they? So it is right, uh, it's practically true. Uh, auto instrumentation is uh, uh, inherently hard to apply to binary. So some effort are uh, underway to solve this issue. And uh, left one is an open telemetry goal instrumentation project. Uh, take an approach that uses eBPF to dynamically analyzing processes and insert hook into data handling operate operations. And in 2021, Hitachi also explored to uh, try to approach using eBPF to analyze uh, traffic pattern and uh, perform instrumentation through the proxy based on those pattern. And uh, another feature of uh, auto, auto instrumentation, in the Kubernetes world, uh, hotel operator make Auto, auto instrumentation even easier by creating an instrumentation custom resource. The operator automatically attach auto instrumentation to the uh, target application as an init controller. It's so useful. And second topic is the signals. Uh, currently, hotel auto instrumentation can measure three type of signal, metrics, logs, and traces. So metrics capture time series data like latency and uh, error rate. There are lots of types defined by semantic conventions. And uh, log feature uh, enriched application log to uh, structured and uh, contextualized. Uh, trace help us visualize request flow and pinpoint latency bottlenecks. And uh, semantic con convention defines the common attribute that give uh, meaning to signals. For example, uh, an HTTP metric, HTTP server request duration is uh, def defined and it has attributes like method, schema, error type, status code, and so on. Uh, there are many such def definitions, and the scope of analysis, depending on what convention auto instrumentation tool supports. So uh, Java, for example, uh, supports information about JVM and processes, it is uh, useful. So in the next section, Nakashima will 
introduce our work and practice using Hotel. Oh. Now I'll talk about how to use open telemetry in a real development scenario. I focus on failure and performance testing during the development phase. In external monitoring, we use a request generator to send requests and analyze the system response. For example, we look at response time, HTTP status code, error rate, and downtime. This approach helps us evaluate the overall performance of the system. However, what developers really want to know is which component is to be improved. In distributed system, it is difficult to assess the behavior of individual component by external monitoring. Therefore, we will consider a method for understanding component behavior using tests with open telemetry. We integrate auto agent into the target component for testing and correct telemetry during request sending. By analyzing the correct metrics and traces, we can gain insight into the performance and behavior of each component. This approach provides help, helpful information for understanding the impact of each component during test. Next, I'll talk about the concept of analysis using open telemetry. In testing, we should observe the behavior of each component before, during, and the after an event, such as a failure. At this point, uh, we check telemetry related to error rate, latency, resource consumption, and metrics about Java application. Here are three examples of when this analysis is needed. The first is failure testing. For example, let's consider failure tests on the database. The events are database failure and failover. With this analysis approach, uh, we can observe normal operation before the event, detect front-end error during failover, and verify if the system returns to normal behavior after failover. The second is performance testing. When we increase the number of requests, we analyze if resource consumption stay within acceptable limits and if latency is consistent across uh, cross components. This helps us identify bottlenecks and make performance improvement. The third is proof of concept. For instance, if we want to evaluate adding a cache server to a system, the goal is to see if response time improvement are worth the investment. By comparing telemetry data before and after introducing the cache server, we can quantitatively evaluate the impact of this change. In the following slides, I'll explain these three use cases in detail. First, I'll explain the analysis during failure testing on the database. The diagram shows example of the test target system, test tool, and analysis tools. For simplicity, in this session, we'll use a system that application read and write to a database in response to requests. To simulate a failure, we reboot the database send, uh, while sending requests. We integrate Hotel Agent into the Java application during container build. Telemetry is collected by a collector container deployed with the application container. The corrected telemetry is then sent to the telemetry management platform. In this example, we use AWS for system setup, so telemetry was sent to Amazon CloudWatch and AWS X-Ray. Alternatively, telemetry management platform like Prometheus or Iega can be used. The telemetry can be viewed on, this, on the, its dashboard or analyzed in detail using a script after retrieving from the API. The process of analyzing telemetry consists of three main steps. First, select metrics with target attribute and retrieve them from the management platform. 
Next, use these metrics to detect anomaly times for each component. Then analyze the <coughs> then, analyze the related metrics and traces around the detected anomaly times in detail. Here, uh, let's review the format of the metrics data. Metrics consist of the name, data points, and attributes. The name indicates what the metrics data points represent. Detailed definition and units can be found in open telemetry documentation. The recording interval for value is set by the, the collector configuration. For example, if set to five minutes, metrics are recorded every five minutes, and each data point has value over the interval. Data points record values in histogram format for the interval. Telemetry, telemetry management platform like CloudWatch can use this histogram to provide statistics such as sample count, average, maximum, and minimum value. Uh, attribute describes the condition under which the metrics was recorded. For example, HTTP server duration has attribute like status code, host name, and request URL. Even if desired information is not directly available in metrics, the data can often be obtained by processing metrics based on attributes. Here are some useful metrics for testing. To check the status of requests and response, uh, HTTP metrics are useful. The duration is only metrics always recorded about HTTP. The HTTP status code is recorded as an attribute of duration. Then we can calculate the error rate by aggregating the sample count of duration by status code. Error rate and similar metrics are sometimes calculated automatically by telemetry management platform. To check resource usage, metrics related to runtime environment like the JVM are useful. These metrics provide information on thread count memory and CPU usage. Since they are metrics, they include statistical value like average, maximum, and minimums. Information about database, ac database access can be obtained from database metrics. These metrics show data such as number of connection at each time, uh, time taken to create connection, and uh, the number of pending requests. Now let's return to discuss thing uh, about failure testing. Using metrics, we can create a dashboard like this. A dashboard helps us understand changes in metrics over time. In this example, we can see that the database reboot caused database reboot caused request errors at twelve twenty four. And yeah, 12, 14. So, so we can also observe um, increase in latency that correspond with these errors. So next, I'll talk about a more detailed analysis using metrics and traces. The dashboard from the metrics are not enough for a detailed analysis. Metrics, metrics are recorded at a relatively long interval usually over one minute. For the detailed analysis, we want to focus the pinpoint impact of a failure. The met better method is retrieving metrics from the management platforms API and analyzing it with a script. For example, you can retrieve metrics in JSON format and use threshold of error rate or response times. Then, you can identify anomaly time caused by a database failure. This threshold don't have to be fixed value. Considering metrics is a uh, statical data, so you can set dynamic threshold based on typical average or P99 value, adjusting to the environment. This increases the 
the usability of your analysis script to detect anomaly over shorter intervals we can use traces unlike metrics traces record detailed information for individual request they also capture timestamps response times and http status this chart shows the start times of each traces and vs uh, with the http status is 500 during the anomaly time identified by metrics since we are sending multiple requests per second during testing so section with no traces uh, also indicates the impact of the failure to analyze the impact during the anomaly time detected from the traces so we check other metrics and traces for example during a database failure changes in connection count and wait time can be observed from database metrics database failure may also cause retry from the application so that's leading to increased resource consumption by reviewing JVM metrics, we can check whether the memory and CP usage remain within specified limits. This helps us assess if resource consumption from one application could affect other applications. Additionally, using traces allows us to analyze response times of each request. In this example, uh, the application response time Application's response time increased significantly during the failure, indicating that it is not returning error response immediately. This observation can help developers identify missing setting about timeout in the application. The second use case is bottleneck detection in low testing. The basic process is the same as, the, as in the failure testing case. So we want to check latency and resource consumption as a number of requests increasing this to detect bottlenecks. To do this, we check HTTP metrics and JVM metrics using the same steps as before. Once bottleneck is resolved, Another part may become the new bottleneck. Therefore, bottleneck detection in low testing is expected to be repeated as development progresses. Because of this, it is essential to detect bottleneck quickly using telemetry. In performance testing, we may want to investigate latency bottlenecks as a segment level within requests. For this purpose, trace-based analysis is effective. Traces record the start and end time for each segment with a request. By analyzing this information, we can perform more detailed bottleneck detection, providing variable insight for developers. The third use case is performance evaluation for introducing a CAS server. Adding a CAS server is expected to improve latency for database access. In this performance evaluation, we check latency before and after introducing the CAS server using HTTP metrics and traces. The steps follow the same method as in the first use case. In this test, developers want to know whether the performance improvement from a CAS server was the cost. The CAS server can reduce latency, but its introduction and maintenance can be costly, and it may increase potential failure points. If there is a little change in performance with the CAS server, developers may de decide against it. For this decision, developers seek quantitative evidence, not just intuition or experience. Implementation, uh, <coughs> implementing open telemetry is an uh, easy and effective way to provide this evidence. 
using metrics easily allows for statistical evaluation of latency. Using telemetry is in the design and development phase supports developer skills and contribute to more accurate decision making. So here is a summary of uh, key telemetry uh, useful for testing. So common metrics such as throughput latency, error rate, and uh, resource consumption can be gathered with HTTP, JVM, uh, database metrics. Open telemetry also provides many additional metrics beyond this. So for more detail, please refer to the official documentation. Here is a list of, of HTTP and DB metrics. Open telemetry metrics are categorized into three types, uh, required, uh, recommended, and optional. Optional metrics may not be available depending on the correct or programming language. So the metrics presented here are either required or recommended, so you are unlikely to encounter issue so when using them. Here is a list of JVM metrics. Metrics related to resource consumption may be collected as either JVM metrics or process metrics, so depending on the environment. Please choose the appropriate metrics based on your specific environment. So next, I'd like to share some practice and tips we learned while using open telemetry. The first is about cost management. Open telemetry is open source software, so there is no direct cost for using it. However, if you use it with managed service like AWS, so be mindful of telemetry collection cost. We use the open telemetry collector on the sending side and AWS service on the receiving side. So AWS charges based on the amount of telemetry collected. For example, without sampling distribute sampling uh, distribute traces, so even in, in a simple two-tier system, is 50 requests per second. So we incurred uh, about twenty dollars in daily costs. If tests are cons constantly running, this could result in sixty thousand in monthly sixty thousand dollars in monthly costs. To avoid this, we recommend stop, stopping trace collection when tests are not running or setting up sampling rules. The second point is to be aware that some metrics are optional. Open telemetry metrics are categorized as required, recommended, or optional. Even if metrics is listed in open telemetry documentation, it may not be implemented in all languages or collectors. For example, with HTTP metrics, the only required metrics are related to duration. The third point is that metrics names may change depending on the open telemetry version. For instance, DB client connections usage was renamed to DB client connection counts. If you are using distribution of open telemetry, such as a dot, so the latest changes may not reflect it, and older name may still be in use. Pay attention to these name changes when, when retrieving metrics or processing them with scripts. Let me also share some feedback from the development teams on our activity. They mentioned that uh, implementing equivalent logging functions Sorry, uh, within the application would be very challenging uh, compared to collecting data with open telemetry. Regarding observability, while there are commercial software options available with advanced feature, these solutions often have a high introducing cost. Using open source software to achieve only the necessary function is better. However, since support is limited to the OSS level, caution is needed when integrating the, these tools 
into products. Finally, uh, let's talk about the key takeaway. So our system grows larger and more complex each year. So open telemetry can be an effective tool even during the development phase. Open telemetry is relatively easy to implement, allowing for quantitative analysis of uh, user experience and resource changes. However, uh, however, there are some points to keep in mind, such as telemetry collection cost uh, when integrated with managed service. So let's use open telemetry to enhance our development experience. So that's all for me. Uh, thank you for listening. Okay. Uh, so, uh, any question or comment? Okay. Okay. So, thank you for uh, joining this session. Uh, yes. Have a nice day.